Ken Shamrock's contributions to wrestling are noteworthy. He introduced the ankle lock finisher to the WWE and also popularised opponents tapping out in WWE rings. Before there was no real physical cue for a submission in wrestling, except maybe the victim furiously nodding his head. The backstory WWF gave Ken Shamrock when he came into the company was all pretty much true. Shamrock did have a really rough upbringing, sleeping in cars and getting into scraps at a very young age. Shamrock ran away from home when he was 10 years old and he was stabbed by another child on the run, putting him in hospital. Shamrock, at the age of 13, was then kicked out of his home by his stepfather. As a high school senior, Shamrock qualified for the state championships in wrestling but broke his neck in practice days before the competition and underwent neck surgery. He was told his sporting days were over by doctors, but Shamrock carried on excelling, particularly in football. In all honesty, covering Shamrock's MMA career would be a long video in itself. We want to focus on his pro wrestling career here, so I'll try to go through some of Shamrock's highlights as an MMA competitor. Shamrock had his first legitimate fight in Japan in October 1992 and made his way to Pancras Wrestling in 1993. I don't want to cover Pancras too much in this video, but you should really look into some of Shamrock's fights with the organisation. There's everything from rule breaking to work shoots that would fit in nicely in the pro wrestling world. Shamrock would leave Pancras with a 17 win, 3 loss record. Shamrock lost at UFC 1 to Royce Gracie, but after the failure, he went 6 fights in the UFC without losing. The streak ended when he lost to Dan Savern at UFC 9 in a strange no-closed fist match due to state regulations in Michigan. After one more victory at Ultimate Ultimate 1996, Shamrock left the UFC to join WWF. To give you an idea of Shamrock's MMA dominance up to this point, he had 23 wins, 5 losses and 2 draws in Pancras and the UFC. 3 of these losses were rumoured works in Pancras, 1 loss was to Royce Gracie and 1 loss was to Dan Severn at UFC 9. Shamrock was still regarded by many, if not most, as the best fighter on the planet. He was involved in the two most important rivalries in UFC history, Gracie vs Shamrock and Tito Ortiz vs Ken Shamrock. He helped shatter the UFC's pay-per-view record as well as their cable television ratings record. The money came calling though and Shamrock felt he would find better fortunes in the world of professional wrestling and the WWF. Again, there is so much more to Ken Shamrock's MMA career that I haven't covered here. This is just a general view to give you guys an idea of his career in mixed martial arts. Just as a side note, Shamrock would return to UFC after his WWF career ended, but it ended in defeats and Shamrock eventually attempted to sue UFC's parent company. I'm sure some heavy MMA channels here on YouTube will have covered this already if you have a look. In the end, Shamrock lost his suit to the UFC and he was ordered to pay their attorney fees, totalling $175,000. Shamrock was deeply criticised for fighting in UFC and other MMA promotions long after he was past his prime. UFC President Dana White said in 2008, Ken Shamrock was in a beef with us over his contract. We thought he retired, he was claiming he didn't and still had one more fight. And my attitude was, I'd rather pay Ken Shamrock than not fight. Shamrock already had pro wrestling experience before making his way to the WWF. He had his pro wrestling debut in Atlantic Coast Wrestling in 1990 under the name Wayne Shamrock. When the company folded, he moved to South Atlantic Pro Wrestling, which was initially a NWA promotion. Here he worked under the name Vince Torrielli. Shamrock also found big popularity in Japan's shoot style company, the UWF. The world's most dangerous man wasn't a fancy name WWF decided to slap onto Shamrock just to sell t-shirts. It was a legit moniker given to him by ABC News based on his previous MMA record. That didn't stop WWF using the nickname at every and any given chance during Shamrock's WWF run. Shamrock was booked by WWE to referee the WrestleMania 13 submission match between Bret Hart and Steve Austin. Shamrock would get physical at the end of the match when Hart refused to stop beating up Austin after the bell rang. The crowd popped huge for Shamrock when he took down Bret Hart. Shamrock has since said that both Hart and Austin were class acts and they took the time to listen to Ken's ideas about the match. Shamrock's first pay per view match occurred at In Your House A Cold Day in Hell when he squared off against Vader. Live shots were fired during this bout as both Shamrock and Vader worked a very stiff match. Some of the punches during the match were absolutely brutal. Quote Vader, 
I had given him too much credit as a worker and I actually wanted to get down to his level so he could punch me in the face to make those shots look good. So I gave myself to him. And it was intentional but that's part of the deal. And I gave him that big shot to the head as a receipt. I hit him as hard as I could. I don't think it faced him but it looked like it did. I clocked him pretty good. Ken spent the remainder of the year mostly feuding with the Hart Foundation and Vader. Behind the scenes though, Bret Hart was becoming a mentor to Ken Shamrock and they had a great friendly relationship. This, in turn, made the Montreal Screwjob a messy situation for Ken when dealing with Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon. Ken Shamrock has said in a shoot interview that because he supported Hart, it led to his monster push disappearing. I'm not so sure what to make of this because he was booked into his first WWF title match against Shawn Michaels one month later after the Montreal incident. HBK vs Shamrock would take place at In Your House Degeneration X, however Shamrock would lose via disqualification. Throughout early 1998, Shamrock feuded with the Intercontinental Champion The Rock and his Nation of Domination stable. He lost to The Rock via disqualification at the Royal Rumble and a victory over him at WrestleMania 14 was reversed after Shamrock continued to apply his ankle lock after The Rock had submitted. This was right when The Rock's career was starting to blossom. Some of the promos Rock cut on Shamrock were absolute classics. In June 1998, Shamrock competed in the King of the Ring, eliminating Nation members Mark Henry, Kama and The Rock, as well as Jeff Jarrett to win the tournament. Before turning heel close to the end of 1998, Ken Shamrock was involved in two good matches with Owen Hart. The first was a Hart Family Dungeon match that took place in Stu Hart's basement at Fully Loaded, and the second was a special Lion's Den match at SummerSlam. WWE was trying to capitalise on the success of UFC by having Ken Shamrock compete in a work match inside a cage that was kind of similar to a UFC octagon. The Lions Den match was named after Shamrock's MMA training school. By no means was this a 5 star classic but it was a very good bout with a gimmick worthy of revisiting and revisited WWE did. Shamrock would compete in two further Lions Den matches down the road, one against Steve Blackman and one that's been forgotten against Vince McMahon. Shamrock would go on to win the Intercontinental title after turning heel in October. He joined Vince McMahon's evil corporation and became a tag team champion along with his partner the Big Boss Man. While playing the role of a heel, Shamrock would work mainly against Goldust, Val Venus and D-Generation X. In 1999, Shamrock would eventually leave the corporation and begin a short feud with The Undertaker. The two would wrestle a near 20 minute match at In Your House Backlash, which The Undertaker won. Shamrock would then go on to be part of the short-lived Union Stable, a group of guys who formed together to oppose the corporate ministry. It was during this time the aforementioned Lions Den match vs Vince McMahon occurred. He began a rivalry with martial artist Steve Blackman that saw Blackman and Shamrock fight one another in a series of unorthodox matches. The feud ended at SummerSlam 99 where Shamrock defeated Blackman in a Lions Den weapon match. He went on the feud with WWF newcomer Chris Jericho before departing in late 1999. There have been a lot of different reasons given as to why Ken Shamrock decided to leave WWE and trying to find the correct reason results in a minefield of misinformation. First we will hear what Shamrock said himself as the reason for his leaving. Ken said it was because he just missed his family. Quote Ken Shamrock there was a lot of stuff happening there. For me, I'd kind of hit this wall where I was on the road so much that I was missing my kids' football games and wrestling matches and the dances they were going to. I had five kids, so it really hurt me to miss that many things. I felt that was a good time for me to figure out how to stop being on the road and be with my family. It just seemed like I spent so much time on the road, I missed my kids growing up and I couldn't handle that. Another reason given for Ken's departure was that Vince McMahon wanted him to enter a storyline where he would become attracted to his on-screen sister, Ryan Shamrock. I don't think for a moment this could be the reason for an all-out firing. Maybe it was a strike against Ken Shamrock, who knows if it's even true, but the story is out there. Another speculated reason was that Curtis Hughes, who acted as Chris Jericho's manager, hurt Ken Shamrock and put him on the injured list during one of Shamrock's last matches. Specifically, Curtis badly aggravated a neck injury that has plagued Shamrock for years. Ken took too long to come back from the injury and therefore he was released from the company. Again, it's speculation but it is out there. Ken Shamrock was legit injured by Curtis Hughes but we're not so sure that he was fired because he couldn't come back in time. 
Finally, the most well-known theory out there, and the one I would side with, is that Ken simply wanted to fight again in legitimate MMA contests. The reason why he went to the WWF in the first place was because the UFC had been taken off pay-per-view, so there was not that much money to be made. This was also before the Pride organisation took off, so there wasn't really anywhere else to go within MMA to make big money. WWF was the best option for Ken Shamrock at the time. I think this, along with missing his family, was the reason that Ken Shamrock left the WWF. It's difficult to say though. In 2002, Ken Shamrock had a UFC match, worked an independent wrestling show such as Juggalo Championship Wrestling, Ring of Honor and TNA, and even won the NWA World Heavyweight Championship in TNA's first ever pay-per-view. This means that Shamrock is recognised as TNA's first ever world champion. As noted earlier, Shamrock did indeed return to the UFC, but the return went poorly. After humiliating defeats in MMA and work drying up in pro wrestling, Shamrock expressed a desire to return to the WWE. In 2008 he said he wanted to return to face Kurt Angle in a match. This obviously didn't happen. Quote Ken Shamrock, There was always the idea to have the opportunity to finish some unfinished business. If that happens, that will be great. That would be awesome, I think for myself, the fans and also the company. I think people would buy into me coming back and actually making a run at the title. But if that doesn't happen, it's not one of those things that will keep me up at night, but it's something I'd like to accomplish. So far, WWE has pretty much ignored Ken Shamrock. While their licensing department did secure Shamrock for a few video game appearances, nothing else has really came of it. Shamrock now wrestles independent dates. He has been scheduled to work in Major League Wrestling this year and also found work in Australia last year. Maybe it's a little too late for Shamrock to step back into a WWE ring, but with some of the questionable names that have entered the Hall of Fame, one has to wonder why Shamrock hasn't been given the privilege of an induction, at least up until this point.